Hey guys, so in today's video, we're going to be sharing with you the best and most detailed 4411 formation breakdown you've ever seen. This is one of the most underused formations in the game, and if you're keen on using the 4411 this year as your formation, then you need to see this video. As always, show your support, please hit the like button, subscribe, but most importantly, hit the notifications bell so that you know exactly when new content is released. So here is exactly what we will be covering in this video. So let's get straight into it. So as we said, the 4411 is one of the most underused formations in the game, and we don't really know why. It's a really solid and compact formation that's really, really tough to play against, as there's not really any space anywhere for people to be able to exploit, especially with the way our instructions and tactics set this formation up. Secondly, we really love attacking in this formation, as we just find it to be super smooth in transition, but also we find most of our players seem to be open all of the time. We found passing and creating chances in this formation super easy. And we do like to use the fullbacks in an attacking way, which made it even easier, despite not having any detrimental effect defensively. And thirdly, this formation does a really great job of defending. And like we said before, there's not too much space for people to be able to exploit because we didn't really concede too many chances. The only area that we really had to worry about was behind the midfielders for anybody who uses central cams because there is a little bit of space due to the lack of a DM. But because they're boxed in between our centre backs and midfielders, this was generally quite easy for us to stop. So let's move on into our tactics that we decided on for this formation. So starting off with the defensive style, we chose balanced. And as this is a formation we really want to control the game in, it's not a formation that we really want or need a press to be able to pull our players out of position and leave any space for the opponent. So balance is generally something we're always going to go with our starting formations. Moving on into the defensive width, we chose 50, which at the moment, sort of between 40 and 50, is a bit of a constant for our formation. And that's due to the fact that you really want to keep that middle of the pitch compact. It's much better to leave space out wide because things like crossing and that isn't super overpowered at the moment. So it's best to push people out wide and have a much more compact and solid midfield. In terms of depth, we settled on 55 and generally when we don't have a CDM and that sort of player to sweep up behind, we do feel a little bit less comfortable about playing a higher depth because the lack of a CDM can make it a bit easier for your opponents to counter. So we chose 55, which still allows us to get forward and dominate and be on the front foot. But you do have to be really confident in your passing ability in this formation, as this is 100% the most important skill needed to make this formation work. Build up play, we chose slow build up and it's much for the same reasons because this is a formation where your players are quite close together. So quick and sharp passing is really easy in this formation. But because of the lack of a CDM, we feel that fast build up would leave us far too exposed because it would mean we'd have to start controlling our centre backs and full backs and dragging them out, which is never something you want to do defensively. But again, you really need to take care of the ball in midfield to avoid those situations as much as possible. And chance creation, we went for possession, and there's a really good reason for this. And that's because direct passing would open us up way too much for the previous reasons mentioned. This is a really strong formation to dominate and control games in. And we had so many games where we finished with 250 plus passes, 92% and above passing accuracy, and 60% and above possession. So we chose possession because that allows us to really cut through our opponents in a different way, which is super effective, and control those games. An offensive width, we chose 65, and the main reason for this is because we have some width in those wide midfielders, you really want to use that and stretch the pitch. And if you use them correctly in tandem with the fullbacks, you can create a lot of gaps and holes in the midfield. And that is where that fast, sharp, accurate passing really comes into its own when you can exploit that space. And then for players in the box, we chose five because we really want our instructions to dictate where the players go and make sure that those sort of wide midfielders stay where they need to be. They do need to get into the box from time to time, but especially those midfielders, you don't want those going too far forwards because then you have no cover back. And in terms of corners, we left it on three. Uh, but if you are someone who is always concerned about counterattacks, you can leave them on one and that is completely fine. Now, before we continue... If you want us to make more videos like this, then make sure you hit the thumbs up button as this goes a long way to supporting us. And make sure you comment below right now with your questions and thoughts on what other formation videos you'd like us to cover going forwards as we are in the process of making a lot of content. Now the instructions are the most important part of this setup and they are by far the thing that makes this work or not work. 
So let's get back into it and jump into the instructions that we decided on for this formation. So as with all our goalkeepers, as we mentioned in every video, we like to have them on comes or crosses and sweeper keeper. And if you are someone that controls your goalkeeper, then these instructions aren't super important. And again, when it comes to attributes, we've mentioned this in a lot of our videos, you really want to be focusing on reactions, reflexes and a goalkeeper's height as they're only really the things that matter when your AI is in control of your goalkeeper. So moving into the fullbacks, we decided to have them on balance because we do like to have that offensive mindset to make attacking much easier. We are somebody that loves to attack and we want to get forward as much as possible and we want them to link up with those wide midfielders. But if you are someone who struggles with defending, then we do suggest leaving them on stay back while attacking. So some of the key attributes that you want to look for when choosing your fullbacks is you of course want to have that high defending, that good physical to be able to allow your, your, your attackers to get forwards and to be able to dictate how your wingers work. And also you want to have good reliable short passing because they're going to be needs playing a lot of passes into that midfield, a lot of cutbacks as well when they get into the final third. So they're real important stats. Of course, with the centre-backs, we're going to be keeping them both on stay back while attacking, which is pretty obvious. And when it comes to key attributes, of course, pace is going to be super important and one that a lot of people look to. But as we've said many times before, we like high reactions and composure. We feel like they're really key to having good defenders in this FIFA. And of course, high defending stats such as in interceptions is super important as well. But a defensive awareness and aggression are two of the stats you want to look out for. When it comes to the central midfielders, we want to have them both on balance. We want to have them both on stairs of the box and cover center. And the main reason for this is because they are used as box to box midfielders. And we do need them to do a good job in both boxes, both attacking and defending as that's how we use them. But we still need them to cover the center and cover passing lanes when we do get back into that defensive shape. Now, again, there are a few other ways that you can play with this formation. If you are someone who wants to be a bit more defensive, you could have these guys on stay back while attacking if you have the fullbacks on balance and vice versa if you play them the other way. But in this way, we like to have them with high stamina and also good interceptions. But you do want to have good passing and decent dribbling as well. Shooting is important to an extent, but they don't get into too many shooting oppositions. Mainly that is left for the guys in front. So now moving into the wide midfielders. Now these guys are super important to the success of this formation. We have a lot of instructions. We have come back on defense. We have getting behind and get into the box for crosses. Now the reason we have them on come back on defense that is mainly for because we have the fullbacks on balance. Now, if we didn't have the fullbacks on balance, we wouldn't need this on. But we don't. sometimes you'll get caught with both players up the top end of the pitch. So just having the wide players being able to sit in that space if the fullback is out of position, let's say, it really helps kind of like just slow your opponent down whilst your fullback is getting back into position. And then it makes you quite difficult to break down as well. But we do want to have them on getting behind and get into the box because we do want them getting in when the other one is maybe crossing or cutting the ball back. So it's really important that they do that role. And in terms of key stats, of course, with all wide players, you need to have pace that is kind of paramount. You also need to have good passing and good dribbling because they are going to spend a lot of time on the ball and they do really take on their defenders a lot. So you do need to have good dribbling. And also, I would probably recommend having a four star weak foot and four star skill moves as the bare minimum. So now moving into the sort of second striker, which in this case is Pellegrini. We're just going to have him on stay central and do nothing else. And the reason why we didn't choose anything for the attacking run, such as getting behind or false nine, we want him to do uh, everything. We don't need him to do a specific role. His main role is sort of to link up with, with uh, the striker, but you do need him from time to time to be able to drop in and link the play between the midfielders. So if he's sort of getting in behind, there can be a big gap between your mids and your strikers. So you do need him to be able to play both roles in that position. And when it comes to key stats for this player, of course, you do want to have high passing such as short passing and long passing as well. You do need to have good vision. You need to have good dribbling. This guy really needs to have this guy really needs to have everything. He really has to be able to do a lot of different roles. He also needs to have some decent pace because there's going to be times where he runs in behind. So it's really important that you have probably it's the it's the player that you need to have that's your star player in your team needs to play in this position. And then when it comes to the striker, his main job is there to just put the ball in the back of the net. So of course we need him on stay central and get him behind so that there's that threat in behind as well as obviously some players staying behind. It's really vital that this guy, that these two strikers link up super, super well because these two are going to score the bulk of your goals and they're going to get the most of the goals and the assists and the chance created. 
So especially these two players are very, very important to the success of this formation. And you need to have your probably your two best players in this position. So when it comes to your top striker, of course, high shooting is super, super important. That finishing ability is incredibly important. If you're someone who likes to use sort of skills, four-star skills would be helpful. A four-star weak foot is also super important, and we really like to have high composure as well. So that is it for the 4-4-1-1 formation, and we really love this formation. We think it's a brilliant formation that not a lot of people use, and we definitely recommend that it's one that we think should people should use a lot more. It's really important. If you're someone who likes to use possession and control the game, this is a formation that you guys are going to absolutely love. So as we said earlier in the video, if you want us to continue to make more detailed formation videos like this one, then we do need your support. So make sure you smash the like button, make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications bell so that you know when that new content is coming. And also make sure you go and follow our Twitter and our TikTok if you want to see even more FIFA content from us. And let us know down in the comment section if you have any questions that you want us to answer as we love helping you guys out. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.